all things come to an end. A common saying that pretty much applies to anything. Nothing lasts forever. Even the most expansive lands that stretch out for millions of kilometers have an end. Minecraft's worlds, even if they seem infinite, have borders around them. The same goes for our world too. The universe, with an almost infinite number of stars and planets, will come to an end. But how do we know that? How do we know that the entire universe will one day come to an end? There are numerous theories about how this will happen, but my favorite explanation has always been the heat death of the universe. Not only does it have a super cool name, but the way that it actually happens is very very interesting, so that's what we'll be exploring today. First, I want you to imagine two villages. One is a bustling village with 50 villages in it, and the other is an abandoned village with none. Every minute, I'm going to select a random villager and move it to the other village. So for the first round, no matter what, I'm going to be selecting a villager from the popular village and move it to the other side. But then eventually, the empty village will have quite a few villagers, and I may choose a villager from that side to come back. Now let's see, I keep this running for a while and eventually I come back. How many villages will be on each side? The most common and best answer is somewhere around 25 villagers on each side. This is because this is obviously the most likely chance and something you'll see a lot in real life too. This is kind of analogous to if you have a metal bar and heat the end of it. The heat on that end will spread out to all of the bar until they are all the equal temperature. This doesn't happen because the heat sees the cold and starts running towards it. No, 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 it's completely random. But eventually, just like the villagers, that heat energy distributes all across the bar. The atoms and molecules transfer energy through collisions and through random motions distribute across the bar. Now, is it fully possible that after the villager transfer happens and I come back, that one side has all the villagers? Yes, it's 100% possible. But the chances of that happening are so astronomically low that we just assume that it goes towards equilibrium instead. Same with the bar. It's actually fully possible that the heat energy just stays at one end. But that never happens because the chances of all those molecules colliding in an exact way that the energy stays at one end is just so incredibly low. If we use the villager analogy, imagine a near infinite amount of villagers with a near infinite amount of rounds and the chance of that happening is basically zero. That's why we just assume that heat energy has the tendency to go towards cold areas. Notice that we use the word tendency and not it will, because it most likely does, but it's completely random. Now this concept is actually called entropy. The measure of entropy is how chaotic or likely something is to become, kind of the measure of disorder if you search it up. If all of the villagers were in one village, that is currently in low entropy. If the villages are split evenly, then it has high entropy. In the bar scenario, if all the heat was on one side, then that is low entropy. And if the heat was distributed evenly, that is high entropy. Another way of thinking of entropy is the amount of different ways something can get to a state. Let's compare something like ice to water. An ice cube's molecular structure is very rigid, and with a very specific pattern that needs to be met. Water, on the other hand, is very fluid and the molecules are mostly free to do whatever they want. These molecules could be in many more different orientations and still be considered water. But ice is much stricter, it has that crystal structure, and it has much less ways to be considered ice. This is why ice is low entropy. There's less ways to become ice. Now going back to the bar and village scenarios, You'll notice that in both these instances, the chances that high entropy was the result was almost certain. There was very very little chance that something continues to have low entropy, or something with high entropy goes toward low entropy. The evenly heated bar will almost never randomly just start to have a hotter side, and the villagers will almost never start gathering up on one side, it's just such a little chance. It seems that all entropy increases. Well what if we do want it to go down then? What if I just force all the heat to go to one side of the bar? Well then, congratulations, the entropy of the bar would be lowered. Great! But how did you get it to one side? Something actually actively had to be done. It wasn't like the natural process of increasing entropy. In order for me to decrease entropy, I had to do something for it to happen. 
that action, whether it be heating or cooling one side to lower the entropy once again, takes work and energy to perform. Now that work and energy then goes into the environment and once again actually increases entropy. So you don't truly decrease entropy, but instead you decrease the entropy of the bar in exchange for increased entropy onto the environment. In fact, in most cases, the entropy that we release onto the world is actually more than the decrease of the bar's entropy. This is the basis for the second law of thermodynamics. A system's entropy cannot decrease, it can only stay the same or increase. This is the exact reason why air conditioners actually heat the air around us more than cooling. It cools the room, but in terms of the environment actually adds more heat. The air conditioner lowers the temperature of the air, which slows the molecules down and reduces entropy. But in order to do that, it has to apply work, which increases entropy in the surrounding environment. A refrigerator is the same. It transports heat from the inside to the outside, but in doing so, that heat just heats up the room around it. That's the basis of how cooling systems work. They just remove the heat, but that heat is still there and goes to the environment instead. The same thing applies to us. We have low entropy. We have very orderly structures inside of us and need to keep it by increasing entropy somewhere else. We can see this through our internal body heat. If you've learned chemical reactions from biology, by producing ATP or usable energy, we release heat in the form of body heat or breathing. Okay, so how does this explain why the entire universe will eventually die? Well, with this new information of entropy, we can tackle the last thing on our list. Entropy also signifies the concentration of energy. Low entropy indicates that energy is concentrated in one area, such as the heat rod when all the heat was on one side. Think of it as a battery. The energy is all concentrated and readily available, as well as easy to use. From engines to complex machines to organisms like us, we all need this low entropy to function. It's what drives interactions and power. If we take an example of engines, heat engines function off a temperature difference. They need that bar in the bar scenario to have one hot side and one cold side. It cannot function if both sides are the same temperature. But as energy throughout the universe slowly disperses and evens out, it becomes harder and harder to do effective work without concentrated energy. Now this is where the idea of the heat death of the universe happens. It's when the dispersion and entropy reaches a maximum, and work cannot be done anymore. If we think of the universe as the bar, the bar has become a completely equal temperature. Unusable for heat engines, organisms, or machines. None of it can work. The universe can no longer perform any more meaningful conversions, and everything will be in equal temperature. Nothing can happen anymore, and will stay stagnant and at an equal ratio for the rest of time. Well, this begs the last question. So what? Sure, the universe will die out from the entropy maximizing, but this won't happen for hundreds of trillions of years way past the many generations that we have on this earth. What's important is that you're here now, with low entropy and a near infinite amount of low entropy to utilize. Think of your computer, the lights, everything you have. You have the chances now, so all I ask from this video is you do great things with it and chase all your dreams. So hopefully you learned something cool, best of luck with your studies, and bye bye.